This CPU right here has a nickname and it's called has been, not has well, because it's seen better days where the corner of this CPU is actually missing and I've never seen anything like this. And when someone said to me, Brian, I've got this CPU and can you try and get it working again? I thought to myself, sure, like I've gotten some really weird things working here on the channel in the past, so why not give this a crack? Now, generally with CPU pins and, and in this case pads on the CPU, you can get away with a few pins missing or in this case, since it's a CPU, can you get away with a few pads missing? So let's try all the little tricks we can do with this CPU to try and get it to work. And if it does work, I'll talk about some story time with some of the weirdest problems I've experienced in tech here at Tech Yes City. I've just built my PC and I'm getting this weird message to activate Windows. Well, if you wanna get rid of this message, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered for as little as 15 bucks after using the coupon code TYC, you can get yourself a single end user license quickly and easily. Then you get the key, paste that key in there, click next, and you're good to go. Links in description below to get your key today. So first things first, I'm going to put in a CPU that I know works into this motherboard. I just wanna make sure that the motherboard's working fine since the person who gave me this combo said, look, I've got this motherboard and CPU and they don't work together. So we might as well eliminate one potential problem if this was a motherboard and it's faulty and it doesn't work to begin with. So let's just check that out first. This is the first thing I've done here is sprayed it down with multi-purpose spray. And you're probably thinking, well, Brian, you spray down this stuff on pretty much all your tech products. And that's true. But in this case, the water dispersant aspect of this spray is super important for this corner right here because it's been chipped off. It now no longer has really any sealant or any protection. It's basically exposed to the wild. So this lubricant spray is going to do just that. If there's any moisture within this corner it's going to get rid of that and at the same time it's going to do the next best thing and that is lubricate and so it doesn't i guess get any more moisture inside in the future that's of course if it still works And finally, after spending some quality time with this CPU and this motherboard, we have got this thing to post. Now, you'll notice that two of the DIMMs are missing, so we've only got two DDR4 DIMMs in this board. And the funny thing is there is that it's in one and three. So two and four have been essentially clonked out with the corner being missing off this CPU, as well as the top PCIe bracket doesn't work and i believe since this is 6800k it doesn't have all those pcie lanes available so in this second slot here only half the lanes are available to the graphics card so 
it's running an X8 configuration even though this motherboard has an X16 slot. Anyhow, now that I've got this thing back up and working, I can give it back to my friend, JJ. He can take it back and I can tell him, look, half the dims are missing and your top PCIe bracket doesn't work. So <laughs> I don't know what you want to do with this thing, man, because I just, I don't know. I don't think I could sell a gaming PC with this CPU in it in its current state. It's just... I mean, even if it does work, and even if it does pass the stability test, and even if it does play games properly, the longevity factor with that corner missing is something I'd worry about, right? So the CPU could go in a month's time. Basically, that's, that's what could happen with this thing. So yeah, let's, uh, let's put this aside now, and we'll look at another problem that we've got around here at the studio, and I'll take you guys down memory lane with some of the most bizarre problems I've seen. And here we are onto the next weird problem. And this relates to the motherboards that can occasionally have a broken SATA controller. Now, this is the second time I believe I might've seen it once before that. So three times in total during the whole time I have dealt with PC parts. And basically you try to boot off it. It uh, won't allow you to boot, it won't install Windows on that SATA drive. Even if the SATA drive is technically appearing in the BIOS. The SATA controller's just got something inherently wrong with it and it just doesn't work. So in this case, on this 990FX motherboard, thankfully there's a, another controller on board, a Marvel controller, and then you can boot from that controller as well. But if you don't have this controller on board and you've only got that single, uh, maybe four port or six port SATA controller, then what you can do is add in a PCIe SATA controller. And so you can now plug in your hard drive or your SSD to that and then boot Windows and especially if it's a UEFI BIOS, it should install a UEFI Windows straight away and you should be good to go and you have no problem. So I've had to do this once in the past and it basically salvages a whole motherboard that would otherwise not work and someone would, I guess, give it away or chuck it out in the bin. So having a bad SATA controller on your motherboard, that's a problem that can occur occasionally. Now there's also the possibility of having bad USB ports or say for instance, bad onboard audio. And in that case, you've got add-in cards like PCI, even the original PCI add-in USB ports and PCI sound cards as well as PCIe versions. And you're probably thinking, well, Brian, you've got to go out and buy these things and it adds cost to a build. Now, here's the good thing about over time, if you're buying a lot of used components, you'll come into this stuff a lot of the time for free. So all these like little SATA add-in cards and sound cards, I've been just finding them in PCs especially old x58 systems for some reason when i find these older x58 systems especially if they're in bigger cases they come loaded with fans loaded with like usb cards and sound cards and all these other extra things that when you go to reflip it as a gaming pc like pretty much 99.9 .9 percent of people don't need those added extras so then you can take them out and keep them for future usage However, let's get back to topic here. And the first weird problem that I haven't spoke about on the channel was that SATA controller. Another really rare, and this is extremely rare, just like the SATA controller. And I don't think I've touched on this like directly is GPU and VRAM degradation. Now I have seen this three times in the history of my channel. Once when I was in Japan ages ago, I think I did feature it in a video and that was to get the PC to work. I had to just down clock the VRAM significantly. Then recently I did see this as well when I fixed up someone's computer where they said, Brian, my computer's just crashing in Windows and I took it to someone else. They said it was the motherboard. And so basically you just go through things and you test things one by one. And it was, I was like, yeah, this is the graphics card. So what, what happened was it was just the VRAM was just degraded so much over long-term usage that it could no longer run at its uh, default clock speeds. And so what I did was I changed the graphics card for the person, they went home happy chappy, but then I, they just left this graphics card around. And so I just started like toggling around with it and checking it out. And basically if I dropped the VRAM slider all the way to the bottom, it would then work and it would work fine. Now, of course, with this problem, you can do two things, but one of the solutions is kind of dried up nowadays. And that is you could put it on a crypto miner where it's, found, it's fine to make errors. But the second thing was you can put it in a PC and maybe give it away locally to someone or give it to a friend. They can use it as an office PC. But in order to do this, I found the best way is to either, 
if it's old enough, if the GPU is old enough, you can flash a custom BIOS. But if the graphics cards are newer, like 10 series or whatnot, then you can't really do anything. So you can get a afterburner utility and load that up with Windows. Then you can just drop the clock speeds on the memory and sometimes the GPU core as well. I have seen this on a RX 5700 that someone messaged me about where they said, look, my RX 5700's having these black screen problems. And I said, okay, just try downclocking the core. So they downclocked the core a little bit and that fixed their problems. But that AMD problem that I've helped someone fix, that's a separate issue altogether. Uh, the VRAM degradation happens over a long period of time, or in the case of my 2080 Ti, that was happening very rapidly, which I did on a video up here. But basically there is a way around it so you can still salvage some of the hardware if you do this method anyway with that aside if you guys enjoyed today's video be sure to hit that like button for us and also if you're enjoying that content hit that sub button ring that bell but one thing when it comes to all these pc problems that you come into you'll see if you've uh, stayed around tech city long enough that is that a big part of my uh, problem solving comes from trial and error I love trial and error because it's A, you're getting a basis of what works versus what doesn't work. And then from there, you can basically correlate data, whether it's on an Excel spreadsheet or upstairs in your beautiful, I don't know, 16 terabyte hard drive. But one thing for sure is in the land of computers, if there's a problem, most of the time there is a solution. And a lot of the times those solutions, especially if they're niche problems, they aren't available on Google or there's just the wrong advice out there. And you'll be going down these roller coasters and tangents trying to find the right advice pertaining to your problem. Anyhow, back to the CPU, very weird problem. I haven't seen anything like this before, having a whole corner missing. And then one of the corners was actually bent when I looked at it closer. But ultimately we did get that working in the end, which actually ties in perfectly to this question of the day here, which comes from Comrade Mikhail. And they ask quad channel RAM works correctly. Phil shows many of these Chinese Xeon boards skimp out on the quad and only run in dual channel. And they're talking about the video we did yesterday about the One and X99 motherboard. And that is a quad channel board. So you don't have to worry about that. I, I know what they're talking about. And even in the case of the Machinist board, which we've used in the past, that has quad channel memory, though it does it in a very weird way where I think they were using a B75 or H77 license and but still managing to run a quad channel on essentially a board that would otherwise have dual channel memory. So there is some weird things which that in itself could have caused the CPU not to work properly in that machinist motherboard as opposed to the one and with true quad channel that could identify the problem straight away and work. Anyhow, guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Also, if you've got some really weird stories about hardware problems and how you fixed them, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Love reading that stuff, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.